Hey tea heads, this is Don from Mayleaf. In this video, how does brewing temperature affect the taste of tea? In this video, we're going to geek dive into the intricacies of tea brewing and try to figure out how the experience in the cup is affected by brewing temperature. If at any point in time you enjoy this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. And if you're not following us on all of our socials, then go click those buttons. Welcome to the first episode in a really extensive series on Gong Fu Brewing. In this series, I want to start from scratch. I want to question all the rules and focus in on trying to get you to be able to brew simply by instinct. The idea at the end of all of these lessons is that you should be able to look at leaves and should be able to get a very good idea very quickly on how to brew. The first episode is one of the most important, temperature. Before we move on, I'm going to say straight up, we've already done a big chart on how to brew your teas. I'll put a link in the description below. So if you don't want to go through all of the intricacies of how we figure all this stuff out and you don't want to go through this journey with me, check out that link in the description below and you can find out the brewing temperatures that I recommend. But as we go through this series, I may change that chart because what I would like to do is to say, let's start from square one. Let's reset now. Now that we've got lots of knowledge about tea, amassed over lots of videos, let's reset and let's just go through factor by factor so that we can build that brewing chart up to be something that is super accurate. And as I say, what I would like to do at the end of it is create a series of lessons so that you don't need to look at that chart. You can just look at the leaves and know how to brew it. In today's episode, we're going to focus on temperature. Temperature is one of the most overlooked areas for beginners in tea, and that's why we are starting here. Now, whenever I am assessing a tea in terms of its quality, I will use boiling hot water. The reason is because I want to extract as quickly as possible all of the positive notes of that tea, but also the negative notes. I want to expose those negative notes so that I can select tea. But after I have selected tea, or when we go to the short list of teas, then I want to brew for appreciation, to brew the most flavorful cup of tea that I can out of those leaves. And temperature is very key in that. The reason, tea is simply a solution. You have a solid particle, the leaf, you have the solvent, which is water, you mix those together and they create an extracted solution. That is your tea. And temperature affects not just the rate of extraction, hotter water will extract quicker, but it also affects which components in the tea, which chemicals in the leaves get extracted. Some chemicals are very water soluble and it doesn't really matter too much about what the temperature is of the water. Whereas other chemicals in tea are very much dependent on the temperature of water in terms of the concentration of their extraction. And so what we're trying to do today is to focus on that second point, not the rate of extraction, which we'll deal with in future episodes, but which chemical constituents in the tea leaves are dependent on hotter water. And so in order for me to do that, I've had to try to limit the amount of variables here. You'll see that first and foremost, I've limited the particle size. You can see I have ground up these leaves. This is not something that you will normally see me do. I'm always talking about the, the beauty of whole leaf, of, of loose leaf and whole leaf for higher quality tea. But I want to standardize the process. So we have the same particle size for all of these teas. I've got Moonlight White, I've got Imperial Green, I've got Duck Shit Oolong, and I've got Yunnan Black here. I could, of course, have added Pua's, ripe Pua's, I could have added yellow teas, but the point of this exercise, the point of this uh, experiment here, is to create some basic rules that we can use as our building blocks for future lessons. And I figure that this spread of teas will do the job, otherwise I'll be here forever. So we're standardizing the particle size. We're gonna standardize the uh, time of brewing to 30 seconds. 
We are going to standardize, obviously, the water is going to be exactly the same. And what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be brewing the same amounts of each of these teas in 95 degree water, which is 205 Fahrenheit, and 50 degree water, which is 120 Fahrenheit, there or thereabouts. In other words, I'm trying to take away all the variables as much as is possible so that we can isolate simply which chemicals in these tea leaves are reliant on hotter temperature and how that affects the experience. Right, let's get brewing. Here we are, we've just had a manic brewing session, but I wanna be very clear on what we have done. So if you want, you can recreate this. We've taken five grams of the ground leaves. We've brewed them in glass using the same quality of water. We've been brewing at 95 degrees for 30 seconds and at 50 degrees for 30 seconds. So that's 205 Fahrenheit and 120 Fahrenheit. And we started pouring at the 30 second um, mark. So it took a little bit longer than 30 seconds, but it would be even because we're brewing in exactly the same way, pouring through the same strainer. Here is the Moonlight White. You can see the hot and the cold. The hot, the cold, the hot, the cold, the hot, the cold. So this is Imperial Green, this is the Duck Shit Oolong, and this is Yunnan Black. So we've standardized it. The hot ones we put straight into an ice bath to bring down the temperature. And the temperature now is all around the same, around 40 degrees, <clears throat> so warm but not hot. Obviously, because these were hotter, they took longer to go to, to come down to temperature, which is why we used an ice bath. I didn't want to wait too long because that will uh, mean that the tea is reacting with the air and will change. And so we're gonna get a slight, slight blurring of the variables a little bit. So we've tried our best to keep it as standardized as possible so that the only true variable here is temperature. Right, now we're going to go through the kind of main areas of tea experience and we're going to talk about the chemical constituents and whether or not I notice a difference in the cup. The first thing that we're going to talk about <clears throat> is viscosity, is how thick the texture is in the mouth. I'm not talking about finish, I'm talking about just in the mouth the thickness of the, the liquid, right? Now, the temperature at which you drink the liquid is very, very important. Cooler liquids will, will be more viscous than hot liquids. Think about honey. When you heat honey up, it becomes more runny. Whenever you heat a liquid up, it becomes less viscous, less thick. That's why sometimes when you have boiling hot tea, it feels thinner than cold brewed tea. That's not necessarily because it is actually thicker or thinner due to the chemical constituents in the tea, it's just maybe about the temperature that you're drinking. That's why we're standardizing it. Let's go through this and see if we can figure out a difference in viscosity. These are obviously very strong teas, but I'm just focusing on viscosity. Ooh, green tea is strong. Temperature is exactly the same, which is great. That's ideal. Mm. Okay. So viscosity could be caused by lots of different things. Um, obviously the structure of the water, but in terms of extraction, I think, not sure, this is a lot of experimentation, a lot of guesswork, and I've been doing a fair amount of research, but. We, there's still a, lot, a long way to go, but I think it's mostly going to be related to polysaccharides. So polysaccharides and pectins especially, these are kind of naturally occurring thickeners in the plant world. So polysaccharides, the question is, does hotter water extract more polysaccharides than cooler water? And from this test, I would say that the viscosity level is very, very similar between them. They're all around the same viscosity, nice and thick. They change according to tea type, definitely. That's a later episode when we talk about the tea types. When we amass all of the information that we gather, we can apply them to tea types. But let's forget about that for a second. And comparing like for like the same teas, I notice a very, very small difference. 
in viscosity. I will say that potentially the hotter one is a little bit more viscous. So therefore, my conclusion is that whatever chemicals are contributing to thickness are not very dependent on temperature. So you don't have to worry too much about whether or not you should use cooler or hotter water to make a thicker textured tea. Moving on to that, let's move straight on to sweetness because sweetness are also caused by polysaccharides for the most part. And again, from tasting these teas, I don't notice a major difference in the sweetness. What I am noticing, and we'll talk about it a little bit later, is that obviously the hotter brewed ones are slightly more bitter. And so I'm having to just uh, cancel out that bitterness in my, uh, in my thought process or in my analysis, because obviously when you have something that's more bitter, that counteracts the sweetness and so you feel like it's less sweet. But if I just focus, and this is the hard part, on isolating sweetness, Hold on. I think that the cooler one tastes a little bit sweeter to my taste buds, but I don't think that that's because more polysaccharides have been extracted in the cool one. I think it's simply because there are more, there are more bitter notes in the hotter brewed tea and therefore it's kind of uh, fooling my taste buds a little bit because if I isolate just trying to focus on the sweetness, I think that there's very little difference between them. So polysaccharides, which I think contribute to thickness, viscosity and sweetness in the tea, I think is not too dependent on the extraction temperature. Let's move on, we've already spoken about it before, let's talk about bitterness and astringency. Now bitterness and astringency are different things, but they usually come together. I've done a video about astringency, go check that out, very in-depth about the cause of astringency. But overall, the cause of bitterness and astringency is generally due to polyphenols, especially catechins, and xanthines, i.e. caffeine. And I can tell you without a doubt from tasting these that those ke chemical compounds are definitely affected by temperature. So the hotter you brew, the more bitter it's gonna be. The hotter you brew, the more astringent the tea is going to be. Right, let's move on to savouriness. And savouriness is gonna come from the amino acids in the tea, especially theanine. Theanine is that, gives it that savory umami note to the tea. I should do it with green because that's the richest in theanine. It's very salty, it's got a nice umami flavor with the hot. And I would say again, very similar on the cold. So um, again, just like sweetness, I think that savoriness is going to be around the same amount depending on the temperature that you brew, right? We're gonna talk about time and length of brew in future episodes. I'm just focusing solely on the extraction temperatures of these compounds. All right, let's move on to the structure in the mouth and the finish, the length of finish. This is gonna be a bit more difficult. I need to um, have some water just to try to clear the palate a little bit, to wash off the minerals that are on my tongue because in my research and in my opinion, the level of mineral extraction from the tea leaves is going to play heavily in terms of the structure, in other words, the, the uh, physical sensation of the tea after you've swallowed and the length of the finish, how long the persistent feeling and taste is on the mouth, throat and through the nose. So minerals, I think, are the main uh, factor here in terms of uh, causing those factors in tea, those experiences in tea. So let's taste Moonlight White. The hot has a very dry, quenching finish. I'm getting a lot of minerality. I'm getting 
th a, a length through the, through the nose. I'm picking up those kind of um, honeyed notes, a little bit of fermented, uh, fermented flavors, fermented fruits, a little bit of fermented apricots in there. And it stays, it stays. Let's try the, uh, let's have a little uh, wipe. Erase the minerals a little bit from my tongue. Relatively neutral, obviously there's gonna be some persistence of minerality. So I'm not focusing on flavor here. Softer, much, much softer. And I can tell you right now that across the board that's gonna be the case. Definitely, in my opinion, hotter water will bring out more of those minerals, which means that you're gonna have a more structured finish, you're gonna have a little bit more quench, you're gonna have a bit more length um, the hotter you brew. So hotter means more structure and longer finish. Whereas if you go cold, you're gonna get a very soft finish and the finish is gonna be much shorter. Finally, let's talk about flavor. Obviously the most important one and the most complicated one. Um, and this is very, very difficult because once again, the perception of flavor, first of all, is very individual. And secondly, the temperature at which you, you drink the tea is gonna make a massive, massive difference because your flavor perceptions are dictated by temperature. It's very important. This is why drinking out small cups with Gong Fu Brewing is a desired thing. It brings the temperature down to a nice drinkable warm temperature rather than scalding hot because when you have hot liquid, your taste profiles, the taste profile changes quite dramatically. So let's talk about flavor. Let's go through each of these teas one by one and I'm gonna give you my initial snapshot of the differences in flavors. I'm getting bitter, obviously we talked about that, but we're talking about these volatile aromatics now. Forget the bitterness, forget the catechins, forget the polyphenols. What we're talking about now is all of the aromatics, those complex aromatics which make up a tiny percentage of the dry weight of the leaf but contribute to such a large percentage of the actual experience. And on this one, I'm getting woodsy notes. I'm getting a little bit of cream. I'm getting some vanilla. I'm getting some of those floral notes, but more the sweeter end of the floral notes. Let's taste the cooler brood. Much, much higher spectrum flavors. I'm talking mountain air, mountain flowers. The flowers that I was tasting here, less of the sweetness, more of the aroma. I'm talking grass, fresh mowed grass, just when it's starting to become hay, when it's just starting to dry and releasing all of those cut grass notes as it dries. Let's taste the imperial green. Nuts, lots of nuts, lots of roast. I'm getting just dark, dark hazelnuts, chestnuts. There is green, obviously. I'm getting some grass, but it's very, very dark. Again, the opposite. I'm getting nuts, but they taste like raw nuts. They taste like freshly picked nuts that you can um, you break up and you can eat like cob nuts things like that and a lot of grass duck shit very very honeyed some fruit more tropical fruit end spectrum things like custard apples things like a little bit of almond but baked almonds Again, the fruit comes through. Now I'm getting mangosteens. I'm getting those light uh, white fruits, light cheese. Almonds as well, that's baked. This one's not. This one is more like marzipan, like raw marzipan. Yunnan black. Malt, dark chocolate. A little bit of whiny notes to it. 
much more floral, so much more floral. I'm getting some rose, lilacs, and a bit more herbaceous as well. A little bits of um, mountain flowers, mountain herbs, a little bit of wintergreen in there. So the overall um, takeaway with this is, even when you drink the tea at the same temperature, so we're not being influenced by the temperature of the actual drinking liquid, when you brew hotter, you are gonna extract more of those base notes, you are gonna extract more of those low notes, whereas when you brew cooler, you're gonna extract more of the high notes. Or is it the extraction? Or is it that the high note volatiles are very, very sensitive, very, very fragile, and so therefore when you hit it with hot water, they dissipate quicker. Whereas when you brew it in cooler water, they hold, they stay in the cup for longer. Now, this is the next stage of this. We need to take all of this information and move it on to the next stage. I want you to experience this yourself. And so what I'm gonna do is in the next video, I'm going to introduce you to a particular way of brewing that I think works for certain types of tea. In order for you to do that experiment with me, you're gonna need the same tea as me, ideally. So what we're going to do is, if you're watching this when this is released, which is uh, August, middle of August uh, 2018, we're gonna put one tea, it's called Sip Spring, Sip Spring, we're going to put that tea, the pouch of it, because you're gonna need a fair amount to do these experiments, we're gonna make a pouch of it online and it's gonna be on sale so that you can pick one up. We're gonna be doing the next stage of this, the next lesson in this Gong Fu uh, Masters series, we're going to be doing it in about three weeks time. So that gives you enough time to pick this up, pick up this sip spring, and then we can do this experiment together. The next stage of this experiment is all about how we can use temperature to control the aromatics so that you get the best of both worlds, both the low end and the high end and the structure. So let's recap. I know I'm giving you a lot of information and I know it can feel like it's a bit overwhelming and a bit confusing and I'm sorry, but I'm just trying to break it up into bite-sized pieces. I promise by the end of this series, you will be a Gong Fu Brewing Master. I promise you that, okay? So takeaway points. We're not talking about extraction rate. That's a separate discussion. When you control all the variables, when you standardize all the variables and you just focus on which chemicals in the tea leaves are affected heavily by brewing temperature, we can say the following. The first is that in terms of sweetness and savoriness, which comes, in my opinion, from polysaccharides and from amino acids in the leaf, I don't think there is a major difference in the extraction concentration at higher or lower temperatures. Obviously, if you brew it in ice water, it's always gonna extract slower, but generally, it's not a big deal. Similarly, viscosity, which is related to polysaccharides and pectins, in my opinion, is not heavily affected by temperature. What is affected by temperature is the following. Bitterness. Hotter water is definitely going to make for more bitter tea. Astringency. Hotter water is definitely going to make for more astringent tea. Structure. Hotter water is gonna give you more minerality, which means you're gonna have a more structured finish rather than a soft finish. Length, the length and persistence of the physical sensation and the flavor and aromas persists longer with hotter water. And then in terms of flavors and aromatics, we're gonna move that on to the next video, but general rule is cooler brewing will preserve more of those top notes, whereas hotter water is going to shift the EQ of the flavor much more towards the basier, more woodsy notes of the tea. I hope that that takeaway is enough to keep you watching for the next one, I promise you. We're gonna roll through all of these master lessons 
and by the end of it, you're going to be able to look at leaves and know how to brew them. That's it, tea heads. If you made it to the end of this video, then make sure you hit it with a like. Follow us on all of our socials so that you don't miss out on any news and videos from Mayleaf HQ. If you're ever in London, then come visit us in Camden to say hi and taste our wares. If you have any questions, comments, or video ideas, then please fire them over. Other than that, I'm Don from Mayleaf. Thank you for being a part of the revelation of true tea. Stay away from those tea bags. Keep drinking the good stuff and spread the word because nobody deserves bad tea. Bye.